This game is tea and is not suitable for kids. <laughs> Don't let your kids watch it! Ah, spoiler alert! Hey there, honey! I'm gay. Welcome back to Miles Edge Reface Attorney Investigations, everybody. We should have been at the end by now, but no, the game decided, no, you're gonna, you're gonna take a long time. We're cross-examining this butt. His yeah. beard is electric. I don't really know why I'm under suspicion, really. <laughs> Being the leader of a smuggling ring while taking on the duties of ambassadorship, don't you think that the combination is more than enough reason for suspicion? Then there is the matter of the crossbow arrows and the primitive statues. <laughs> he has his own objection voice. What was that sound? Objection! But it like sounded muffled, so it sounded like Zeus saying objection. All of that is nothing more than your flights of fancy. What do you mean by that? Under your hypothetical scenario, Cochin and I were fellow smugglers. Yep. It's not a hypothesis. Earlier we proved it to be what happened. Ha ha ha! Well, let's leave that to one side for now. Because it doesn't change the fact that I have no motive. Oh, so you really had no reason to kill Mr. Cochin. If you want to suppose I had one, then why not? I'll indulge you. After all, this is nothing more than a silly game to me. Even if that's how you see things, I'd appreciate it if you would take it me more seriously. <laughs> I'm sorry. I suppose you are in a bit of a pickle. Very well. A game is no fun if the playing field isn't level. Therefore, I formally claim that I had no motive to kill. Now let's see you disprove it. How can he stand there looking proud when he knows he's killed another human being? Well, I'm not going to stand by and watch him get away with his crimes. How can he be proud to kill a human? Well, he, he got decorated for it. Okay, um, that's a different... <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh, this is coming from the guy who wears Lego bricks on his shoulders. <laughs> I don't think those are Lego bricks. Those they are mega like blocks. Them. He's not good enough for Legos. <laughs> that's true. Are you serious that just because you were partners you had no motive to kill? I'm only following your hypothetical scenario to its logical conclusion. Looks like he's not going to admit it himself that he was in leagues with Mr. Cochin. I suppose not. But I know his relation to the smuggling ring and to Mr. Cochin. You mean he's the ringleader and that Mr. Cochin was his subordinate, right? Correct. But I know more than just that. Miss Von Karma, I'm sure you remember the safe in Mr. Cochin's office, correct? Yes. The safe had two compartments to it, didn't it? Yes, and why do you think those stolen goods were being stored in Mr. Cochin's office? Could it be because he was trying to cheat Ambassador Alba behind his back? So Mr. Cochin didn't turn the goods over, but decided instead to keep them for himself. I suppose it's possible. Hmm. Seems to me that both men were only concerned with their own wealth and well-being. Then that means that maybe they didn't have a trusting relationship after all! What Ambassador Alba had to gain... I believe that is his motive for killing Mr. Cochin. What are you people whispering about amongst yourselves over there? Meanwhile, the reason he just killed him is because he's like, Cochin's family is so well off, I will inherit all of his, like, father's <sighs> factories. That's and... not how that works. That's true. Now I, think, now I think about it, it's not like... The government gets all that. Kill... <laughs> ah, I'm sorry to have kept you waiting. Now then, let's continue with your testimony. To get to the point I was in Alabas the whole time. And what exactly did you do while you were in Alabas? I had a meeting with the Steel Samurai, and then I arranged a few files. Around that time, that thief who was sneaking in took me by surprise. Are you saying that it was Damask 2 that made the first move? Yes, and it was after I was attacked that I hit him on the head of the primitive statue. Unfortunately, he died from the blow, but it was an act of justified self-defense. Calling it that doesn't cover up what you really did. Ha 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 ha! Cover up? No, my boy, I'm not covering up anything. I'm telling the truth. You weren't planning to admit to it, which is why you tried to frame the Steel Samurai. If you weren't an ambassador, I'd be letting my whip fly loose on you right now! I am terribly sorry that I didn't clean up the body better, but I am a busy man. I had a speech to give in the Rose Garden after that, you know. This was before that? Mm-hmm. Yet despite that, you still had time to kill Mr. Cochin, didn't you? 
Objection. <laughs> Man is evil, and I'm sure you are familiar with the facts, but... Mr. Cochin was killed in Babal while I was all the way in Alabast. So it's simply not possible for me to have killed him in Babal. You insist that it's not possible for you to have killed Mr. Cochin in Babal? And you are correct. Oh? I thought you would put up more of a fight, but if you must concede to me... The only thing I am conceding is that it's not possible for you to kill him in Babal. I am not conceding that your alibi is the truth. Oh? I see. However, no matter how you try, know that you can't crush my alibi. Hm. <laughs> you would be wise not to underestimate a prosecutor of this country. Heh, <laughs> we'll see about that. So Mr. Cochin was a friend of Ambassador Alba. If that's true, then why did the Ambassador kill him? It's not like in the case of my father when he ordered someone to do it. The problem we have here is that we don't know what their exact relationship was. Indeed. If they had complete trust in each other, then there is no motive for murder. However, both men were very selfish, and I believe that is from where the motive arose. Alrighty. <laughs> that counterfeit fight, and there's also- They're just like, in reality, that wound actually is from Mini Cochin. Mm-hmm. Oh, he also ordered Damask 2 to steal the primitive statue from him. Probably, yeah. Objection! Why do I have such a stuffy nose? I don't know. You seem to always have a stuffy nose. I think it's the basement. It's like your nose is like, oh, Marty's recording. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, though, I've had so many times, like, recording for stuff where I'm like, ugh, I sound that, terrible. That, ladies and gentlemen, was the actual sound of mucus coming into a nose. <laughs> <laughs> Like it's angry? <laughs> yeah. Oh yes. my gosh. If you want to know, I believe you did have a motive to kill. It was because Mr. Cochin had betrayed you. That was Edgeworth preparing to, like, give his <laughs> 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 pulls his nose. <laughs> but you had your own reason, too. Namely, you wanted to pin the smuggling all on him. Evil begets evil, and because you were trying to test each other, it turned into this mess. How do you, like, get a cravat? You know? You go to the cravat store. Those don't exist in America! You go to, you go to men's warehouse, they, I'm sure they have cravats. Oh, they? Uh, I guess I've never stepped into, like, a men's warehouse. You, a woman, have never stepped into men's warehouse? I don't know. I can't believe it. There's, like, guys who step into, like, justice, probably. Victoria's Secret. Victoria's Secret. But then maybe they're buying underwear for their wives. Anyhow. Maybe. Let's not know. talk about that anymore. I don't believe this. <laughs> you saying that you, a woman, have never stepped into men's warehouse. You have a bad penchant for telling eat all tales, Mr. Prosser. And if you're not, then I suppose you have some proof to support your argument. I never use guesswork in moving my cases forward. It has been proven that this note was written by Mr. Cochin's hand. Shall we take a look at it? The content of the note is a request calling for the theft of Alabast's Primidu statue. <laughs> by killing him and pushing all of the guilt for the smuggling onto him, you walk away spotless. I believe you understand, uh, you understand what I'm drying up being at. You had more than a few reasons to kill him. Objection. Objection! Objection. Are you finished with your hypothesizing? Excuse me? Let's suppose I did have a motive. Even so, a motive or thought alone can't kill. Isn't that right? I didn't expect him to resort to playing the semantics game with me. It appears that this is where the real battle will begin. Now then, if you will excuse me... Wait, what? I told you at the very beginning, didn't I? You only get one question. Oh, we're gonna chase ah! to the airport, and the flight attendant lady's gonna be like... Oh, oh, um... The, the nice lady. The nice lady, yeah. Anna? Ro Rhoda Tenero. Rhoda Tenero. Because Cammy and is And Narcoleptics is... Oh, yeah, she's She was working for the smuggling ring. Mm, that explains why she was so tired. <laughs> it's a tiring job. Ambassador Alba, if you would please just give us a little bit more of your time. It doesn't matter what kind of man Manny was, he was my subordinate. Which is why I would like for us to figure out the real cause of his death. No, I'm fine. That is something for Babal to figure out, and something to which I have no relation to. Palano bursts a gasket. Now he's even turning down a request from Ambassador Palano. 
I'm very sorry, but it seems that even now my voice falls on deaf ears. There's no need for you to apologize, Ambassador Palena. Ugh! We must find some way to stop him from leaving! It seems there are no further objections. In that case, please allow me to return home. Gumshoe stops him. Hold it right there, Ambassador Alba! k k Like I said, Mr. Edgeworth... The Yadagorosu's legacy will live on through me! Yes, but how do you suggest we stop him from leaving? You just leave that to me! Ambassador Alba, do you recognize this? No, and why should I recognize that tattered old organizer? Wait, where have I seen that before? That is a clue my father, Burn Faraday, left for us. Did you say Burn Faraday? Mr. Faraday's organizer. Don't tell me this is the one from the second KG-8 incident. The one in which he wrote about the Yadagorasu's key? Yes. This organizer belonged to the prosecutor you had Miss Yu kill seven years ago. Humph! <laughs> I have no idea what you are talking about. You say that like it was related to me. In inside this organizer, he wrote up every detail of every evil thing you did. What an amusing little girl you are. But that sort of trickery won't work on me. If you won't believe me, then take a look at this. And what is that toy there? That's... The thievery device that was used by the Yadagorasu, or rather my father. Seven years ago, he used this when he snuck into the embassy. What? These two pieces of evidence that hold information the Yadagorasu duck, uh, dug up on you? If you go home now, I won't hesitate to sell it all to Alabas right behind you. Sell it all? <laughs> Send on it eBay. all. <laughs> Kate on just e hops on eBay and is like, I was like, I have to win this bid. Organizer <laughs> for a thousand dollars starting bid. But then Wreck-It Ralph beats him in the bidding. <laughs> <laughs> Forgot about that. Little girl, get to the point. Stop investigating in your slipper, Marty. And I'm sorry. There's like a weird bump. In it, like seriously, I don't. I want to. I don't want to ask you to feel, but like feel the feet. Isn't that weird? There's like a bump of whatever. Not really. What? Can you not feel anything? I'm sorry. This is super. Future important. already cut all of that out. No, that's super important to leave in. Keep no. that in. I want you to go up against Mr. Edgeworth one more time. If you win, then I'll hand me over these two pieces of evidence. Yada Karasu, ever the thorn in my side. Okay, doesn't that organizer, does it really contain any information on his dirty dealings? It's nothing case-breaking, really. Ah, then it was just a bluff. Even if it was, we still can't let all the info my father and Uncle Bad found go to waste. Plus, just the existence of Little Thief is troublesome enough for him. Those two pieces, aren't they keepsakes of your father? It's okay, I believe in Mr. Edgeworth, he'll come out on top in the end. Okay. When the going gets tough, someone's got to be there to put your wind back in your sails. After all this time, you're still quite the feisty one. I applaud your pro powerful nature. Now let me whip you. I refuse to lose this too. Ambassador Alba, you won't be returning home until you give us further testimony. How dare you all, barring a person like me. Ambassador Alba, your testimony, if you please. <sighs> All right, but this is the absolute last. The biggest lie was ever told. <laughs> then, even if you use all the power of Ambassador Palano's office, you won't stop me. I can't let this opportunity chaos created for me go to waste. Where is Edgeworth? Or not Edgeworth. Where is Gumshoe in the midst of all this? He's gonna he's, come running. He's in, in Babal right he's now. He's gonna come running in and be like, "Mr. Edgeworth, sir, I have this new piece of evidence." And I have a gun. Shoots the guy. <laughs> <laughs> no! I'll go to jail for this. That's fine. <laughs> no, he'll like come in and like be like, "I have this new evidence. It's like this button that fell off this pants." And we'll be like, "Ah, <laughs> my pants button." <laughs> No, that's like literally. <laughs> You're not even wearing pants. pants. Oh my god. Alba's alibi part two. The last time I met with Mr. Cochin was here at the Fiatrum Neutralis. After that, I was in Alabas the rest of the time, as I stated earlier. In any case, I did not see Mr. Cochin again after that. As you can see, there's no time span in which I could have killed him. Wouldn't you agree? Two minutes. 
Daltics? Now, since you people were practically begging, I'll allow you to question me. What an arrogant old man! Yes, but no matter. We can't allow this chance to escape us. I will warn you, though. You've reached the end of my patience. Waste my time with any inane questions, and you'll lose this, this much! It's your the penalty meter. <laughs> so any needless pressing or presenting will cost more to our case? In that case, the only thing you can do is present the correct evidence. Understood. Of course. I don't intend to let him intimidate me. I know Mr. Cochin was killed before he returned to Babal. In which case, there's only one statement to which I need to present the evidence. So yeah, if we press the wrong- if we press any statements, I believe we lose- Oh, that's fine. We don't have to. Last time I met Mr. Cochin was here at the Fiat from Neutralis. After that, I was in Alabas the rest of the time, as I stated yeah, earlier. Yeah, that's fine. In any case, I did not see Mr. Cochin again until after that. There's no time span in which I could have it's killed him. It's one of him. the first last two. The first last two. What am I saying? I've been so weird today. You're weird every time we record. No, which but is like, okay. I'm I've weird been every really time we record weird as well. Today, though, like at work, I kept saying everything like backwards, which is not fun. Oh, the, the security footage. Oh wait, wait, wait! It's gonna be like an animated movie. Um, that's beautiful. Sorry. Not as beautiful as some movies, though. Man, that one movie from Freddy Fish Four. <laughs> With yep. the, that's my favorite dun, 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 dun. Mm. Which evidence is it? Uh, the, the push. No, <laughs> not the push. Yeah. <laughs> Your wound is the reason. I mean, it's probably the security footage. Oh, it's not. Mm. Hm. That statement just now stands in clear contradiction to this evidence. No, it doesn't. Ah! He just instantly dies? But that's impossible. Mm. <laughs> the prosecutors of this country. Are you all prone to pointing out non-existent contradictions? How frightening it is to think it might be true. Ugh, I can't let him drag me down to hit with his insults. You, if you had time, please the videotape. Oh. That's for the KG8 incident. If you had time to kill him in a car, you could have killed him. That now. was years ago. <laughs> Um... I think it's this, because he's got the knife in there. Yeah! I see, this is why I play games with you, because I don't... I'd like you to take a look at this picture. It's a rather nice picture, isn't it? It was to commemorate the restoration of relations between our nations. Oh, it's commemorative, all right. One that captures the proof I need to show you that it was you who committed the murder. Come again. This is the knife that killed Mr. Cochin. I see you recognize it as well you should, for it was you who brought it back to this theater. Mm, man. You hid it among the flowers you were to give the, to the Steel Samurai. Meaning that you killed Manny Cochin here at the theater. <laughs> it's time for me to catch my flight. We're not through yet, and there's no way you'll make it for customs in time. It's game over for you, Mr. Edgeworth. But I thank you for the entertainment. Ugh. No matter how passionately you orate, the end result will always be the same. I won't be returning to this country ever again. That's right. This man is an ambassador, and he has extraterritorial rights. No matter how hard we chase after him, we won't be able to have him tried in court! Yes, that's exactly the face you should be making. The face of a worthless cur. No! Now then, ladies and gentlemen, I must bid you farewell. Ugh. I... The courts. Is there no one who can lay a finger on this man? Is this really the end? Lang, my man. Agent Lane! Sorry to keep you waiting, Mr. Prosecutor. Get out of my way! My plane is scheduled to take off soon! That's your own fault! Sorry, but you're not going anywhere, Mr. Alba. I'm through playing games with you people. You can't touch me. If you do, it would spark an international incident, Agent Lane. Sorry, but no, it wouldn't. What? Hey, Mr. Prosecutor. Good job holding the fort down here until I got back. 
Hmm. So, Mr. Alba, your diplomatic immunity has just been revoked. What do you mean, revoked? Spare me this nonsense and let me through. Lane Z says, before aiming for the throat, chew the next shield off first. Interpol headquarters in the Imperial House Ship of the Kingdom of Alabast. The house ship? The it's house ship. I love the house ship. Is it's it the like house a houseboat, but like a it's, house yes. ship? Yeah, so you, you, you know like the houseboats. Yeah, houseboats. <laughs> yeah, it's like a castle on there instead. <laughs> it took a while to get things rolling, but they finally moved on it. The Imperial Household? You, what have you done? You have been relieved of your duties as ambassador, Mr. Alba. How does that work? What? 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 Effective today, effective right now. And you have Mr. Prosecutor's videotape to thank for this. The video the Yagarasu protected. You can't be arrested simply because you're an ambassador. In that case, I thought I'd strip you of that title. You underestimated me, a descendant of the founder of detainment philosophy, Lane Z. 4,000 years of deeply entrenched connections and networks around the world have really paid off. I was about to say, how in the world did he... It can't be! I don't believe this. My ambassadorship has been revoked. <laughs> Looks like you're finally coming to grips with your new standing. Woohoo! Looks like he's totally turned docile again! He's probably in shock from the loss of his shield. Hmm. What a shame. I had so wanted to use my whip on him. Why is this happening to me? I'm just a hard-working, honest ambassador! Aren't the ambassadors men with him? Like, he was going to the airport and he had like a whole bunch of men. I'm surprised they didn't just like push the dudes out of the way. <laughs> Start a war? I don't know. Do you really think you can still pull that on us now? We've already ripped away the mask and seen you for who you really are. Mr. Alba. No! I won't be stopped now! He still intends to fight us? So what if I'm no longer an ambassador? You still don't have any evidence on me. The fact remains that you cannot arrest me. Heh, <laughs> I'd expect no less from you, the boss of the smuggling ring. Well, the rest is up to you, Mr. Prosecutor. Understood. <laughs> you say that I killed Mr. Cochin in the theater. But even if that's true, that there was a knife in my bouquet, I left that bouquet in the theater. So anyone could have taken it out from there and used it, right? Besides, the claim that he was killed here itself is odd. After all, wasn't his body discovered in Babal? Are you claiming that I carried his body all the way over there? <laughs> preposterous. I'll be the one to prove whether it's a preposterous or not. <laughs> Ex-Ambassador Alba, are you ready? Because this is no game. This is war. You do realize this means war. war right? Alba's alibi part three. Of <laughs> seven. I killed Mr. Cochin in this theater using a knife that was stuck in my bouquet. Oh, I, I mean, in my bouquet. <laughs> I, I thought that it wasn't a question, question. mark. I'm like, okay, cool. Oh, thanks, man. I left that bouquet in the theater. Anyone could have taken the knife from there. Besides, Mr. Cochin's body was discovered in Babal, right? Who the heck would put a knife, though, in their flowers? Unless if you were like... Unless if you played Sweeney Todd and Sweeney Todd and someone was like, Right back at you, got you a razor blade! The oh. <laughs> There's no way for me to have transported his body from the theater to Babal. Look, don't you think you've had enough fun with me? You've already stolen my ambassadorship from me. Would you have me surrender too? You have no plans to ever return to this country, isn't that right? Did you know that a bunch of your subordinates are seeking asylum because of you? Ha ha ha! As if I care. Hey, Mr. Prosecutor, boot this guy out of the embassy and we can finally end everything. 
I know, and I will give it my all to see to it that he leaves in handcuffs. Without the title of ambassador, he is just another witness. Yes, just another witness. Okay, he's got the gloves on all now. All right, what are we waiting for? Let's get this guy. And get him good. I wonder if they understand that all I can do is present evidence to the testimony. <laughs> I brought you a taser? No, we can't use that. <laughs> as much of a bot as he is, we can't do that. <laughs> I killed Mr. Cochin in the theater using a knife that was in my bouquet. I mean, in my bouquet. my bouquet. That's right. As I explained earlier. That should be how the first case is in every game. Where it's like, I killed this guy. Maybe? <laughs> <laughs> the commemorative photo shows you had the knife on your personage. You have no proof that the bouquet was prepared by me, isn't that right? Who would gift you that? Excuse me? The fact that there was a knife in the bouquet was something I wasn't aware of. What a pathetic excuse. The weapon that was used is one of your national treasures. It isn't exactly something anyone other than you could touch, but alone take. I allowed some of my trusted subordinates to handle them. It could have been my secretary. You. You're an even bigger slime ball than I'd thought. You would push the guilt of Mr. Cochin's murder onto one of your subordinates? Humph. <laughs> in any case, the fact that the knife was in the bouquet means nothing. I left that bouquet in the theater. Anyone could have taken the knife from there. You still wish to deny your actions? And you still wish to deny reality and accuse me of murder? What? I'm not in denial. This is like every Twitter conversation ever. Just yeah. replace murder with like support Nazis, <laughs> and you basically have. <laughs> okay, I don't know what your Twitter posts are like. I don't post this I'm not stuff. Your Twitter posts. You're a like feed. Oh, I follow a lot of political people. So. Oh, I don't. I had Twitter for like maybe a month. I got it so I could get points in my Animal Crossing Pocket Camp account. That's why everyone gets. That's Twitter. why everyone should get Twitter uh, for <laughs> Animal Crossing. But anyway, I got it. I was like, this seems kind of okay. And then, like, I realized even though I only followed maybe four people, I just got random nonsense in my feed because I didn't follow enough people. Mm -hmm. Nor did I care. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. Twitter's filled with, like, you're a Nazi. No, you're a Nazi. You're racist. No, you're racist. You hate children. No, you hate children. <laughs> and then there's the Pope. And then there's the Pope. The Pope. Following who, the Pope was one of the best. One of the I churches that I performed in, they, they would print out a... They would print out the page, the Twitter page for the Pope, and slap his new post on there onto a wall every week so people who didn't have Twitter could read it. Also, I should point out, Marty and I, we're not Catholic. No. I, I still like the Pope. He's still yeah, he's, cool. he's a cool guy. I have friends Pope who are Catholic. Francis. That's why I was there. Drives a Ford Focus. <laughs> I forgot he drove a Ford Focus. <laughs> I'm not sure if he still does. I'm not in denial that the Pope drives the Focus. <laughs> ah, even though he's not an ambassador anymore, he's still got a really bad attitude. There's been very few killers who had a good attitude. It's like, I... it's like acro. Yeah, he was pretty good. I believe it's because he's no longer ambassador that he can let himself speak freely. He just starts dropping the F-bombs everywhere. Oh, uh, that would be a different kind of video game. <laughs> well, if he's not holding anything back, then neither should well, I. Well, it's, it's like the PG-13 movies can have one F-bomb. Yeah, well, if you said it's dropping a... it right and left, then that's Oh, okay. Movie. If the T-rated games can have one F-bomb as well. <laughs> he's just like, well, Billy. Wait, for the sake of this case, uh, please refrain from what I think you're about to do. Swear? Say the F word. Ah, quite the pair of frightening women you are. But I digress. You calling Edgeworth a woman? He was calling Kay and Francisco. But women. Edgeworth then talks so that it's like, <laughs> pair of women. It's also a stealth insult. Yeah. Even if he was found in Babal, he was killed somewhere else. <laughs> Stop bluffing because you can't prove what you're claiming. If this were a court-martial in my country, then you'd have already been removed from the room. <sighs> Are you taunting us on purpose? Because I'd be happy to show you my claws. Hold, Hold on, Agent Lane. Allow me to fight him my way with evidence. <laughs> I was just joking. I'm not so easily ruffled by the likes of him. Too bad. Though I'm no longer an ambassador, it still could have been an international incident. You have the will to threaten us with that mouth of yours. Then maybe perhaps you can use it to return to the testimony? Very well. But to be fair, you should watch what you say as well. 
No, it's like, it's 3 a.m. Go to bed. <laughs> Is that really so? You could have easily blackmailed your subordinates to be quiet and then move the body. That's quite an insult to me and my subordinates, and I'm afraid we can't have that. It's very difficult to enter my embassy, as the guards always conduct a furrow check. If someone so much as makes an unnatural movement, it would arouse their suspicions. Come to think of it, there wasn't anything unnatural about him in the footage. Mm. Wait. Let me think about that for a second. Mr. Alba said that the guard would become suspicious if someone acted unnaturally. Larry. But then, by the same token, the guard would not become suspicious if someone were to act naturally. If we retrace Mr. Alba's movements, we should find some hint to solving this case. Well, right after the Steel Samurai stage show, he went back to Alabast, right? From there, he started preparing for his speech in the Alabastian Embassy. It does sound like it wasn't possible for him to have gone to the Alabastian Embassy. Francisca broke her accent there for a hot sec. She's tired. He couldn't have gone to Babal, but the body didn't remain at the theater either. It makes sense. It's free in the morning. She's been working hard all day. Is it possible that the body was temporarily taken to a different location first? Okay. No way I could have transported his body. It's probably it's this one. It's the cart. It's the cart? Yeah. Good job, Marty. That's not hard. What else would you transport it with? He was in the statue. He's hunched <laughs> over of the cape. There's just like the dead body in there. Yeah, That's weird. <laughs> Actually, I do believe there was a way to transport the body out of the theater. Perhaps you should give this a look. What is that supposed to be? It's footage from a security camera that captured the state of the immigration area. Should I congratulate you on getting your hands on it? <laughs> Letting you know that we are not the only ones watching your every movement. <laughs> Thank you for the warning. Now, if you could take a good look at this section here. This lump here inside the push cart. Do you know what's causing it? Should I? Because I don't. <laughs> In that case, allow me to enlighten you. This is the cause of the unnatural lump under the cloth in the push cart. That entire statue. We all know it's the it was dead box. All of the hot dog boxes. <laughs> no. Take that. What? What is the meaning of showing me that? It's to say that the unnatural bulge in the push cart is Mr. Cochin's body. You had the Steel Samurai wheel his body away from the real crime scene. Poor Larry has been used <laughs> and abused. <laughs> what a guess! But I wonder if you have any evidence to support it. I admit that for now it is but a hypothesis, however. Ha ha ha! If you can't prove it, then I'm afraid I must be on my way. I don't have any more time to play with you people. 